In this problem, we like to find the area enclosed by these two curves, y equals x squared and x plus y equals 2. And so in my previous videos, I talked to you about trying to determine which of the functions was the upper and the lower. But in many cases, it's uh, easier to do the problems if you consider the left and the right most functions. So let's think about what it would be if we were to look at the function from the top function to bottom function. So if we look at y equals x squared, which is our red function, we see that there's a top and a bottom, which goes from here to here. So clearly, if I were trying to find the area of the red portion, um, up until I got to a place where there was an intersection right there, my top function would always be y equals x squared. My bottom function would always be y equals 0, which is the x-axis. But once I got to the intersection there, then my top function would change, and the top function would be this function x plus y equals 2, or I could solve that and let that be y equals 2 minus x. And so it would go from that being the top function down to y equals 0. Right? And then I'd have to find this intersection, which is somewhere in here. I'm not going to take the time to do that. I'm just going to call that, um, let's call that B for now. And so if I took the time to find that intersection, I'd have um, two integrals that I'd have to calculate to find the area enclosed. One of them would be the integral from 0 to B of the function y equals x squared. And just for emphasis, I'm going to put here minus the lower function, which is 0, dx. That would take care of the red portion. And then I'd have to add to that the green portion, which would be there, the integral from b to 2. And my upper function would be 2 minus x. And just for emphasis, the lower function is 0, so minus 0. We don't really need that, but just so you can see it, dx. So I'd have two integrals that I'd have to actually um, calculate, but I could do that and I would be able to find um, the area enclosed. But let's consider another possibility, and I'm just going to kind of pick this up and move it to another page. Let's see if I can do that here. So. Here's my picture again, but let me consider it differently this time. And so I'll use a different color. Let me use purple. Suppose I look from left to right. Then I would be going from here over to here. And notice that I would be doing that all the way from where y was equal to 0 down here up to whatever that value is where they intersect. But the difference would be I'd actually only have to do one integral. So let's just set up the integral first, and then we'll go back and see if we can figure out what that upper y value is there. So the integral would go from 0 to, um, I'm going to call that c. I'll have to calculate that in a minute, c. And then I would have the rightmost function, if I'm looking from left to right, would be the larger value. Because if we're looking from left to right, the values that we're looking at are the x values. So rightmost values on the x-axis are larger than leftmost values. And so this function over here, the green function, if I write that as x equals, would be x equals 2 minus y. I'll have to do the same thing for the red function. This red function would be, if I look at that, it's on the positive side there, so that would be x is equal to plus the square root of y. Okay. So the rightmost function is that green function, which is x is equal to 2 minus y. And I'm going to subtract from that the leftmost function, which would be x is equal to the square root of y. Let me use a bracket. And that's dy. So one of the benefits of looking at the function that way is that I only have to do one integral instead of two. If you remember on the last page, we were doing two integrals. 
And both of these problems, no matter how I approach it, I still have to find that point of intersection. So let's see if we can't do some work over here on that. So I've got the two functions, x is equal to the square root of y, and I think the other one was x was equal to 2 minus y. So the way that we find out a point of intersection is we set the two functions equal to each other. So that means that the square root of y is equal to 2 minus y. I guess I can square both sides, so I get y is equal to 2 minus y all squared, which is 4 minus 2ab, so it'll be minus 4y, and then plus a y squared. So I'll collect the terms and I have a quadratic that I have to solve. So I have um, y squared and then getting that on the other side would be minus 5y and then plus 4. And that's equal to 0. So if we factor this we see that I believe that's y minus 5 and y I'm sorry, that should be y minus um, 4. And y minus 1. So I think those are factors of 4 that add up to 5, and that's equal to 0. So that tells me that we have intersection at y equals 4 and y equals 1. From the original equation up at the top that we were using to try to find out um, the intersections, we see that the left hand side is the square root of y, so that means that our solution y equals 4 won't work because 2 minus 4 is negative 2 and the square root of a number will be negative. So the only value that's left is y equals 1. All right. So we see now that there's intersection at y equals 1. So that integral that we had from the previous slide, which is this one here, I'm just going to pick that up, copy that. I know now that that upper limit is 1, so that integral is going to become the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 minus y minus the square root of y dy. I can rewrite that as the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 minus y minus y to the 1 half power dy. And that should be straightforward for you to integrate and calculate the area.